is why we say, don't do drugs. Because you may get off the drugs, but I'm still dealing with the after effects. Yeah. And I'm getting better because I'm realizing that this stuff is not real. It's in here, but it takes time. There's repercussions. All right, let's catch up on life also. So since we were last hanging out for my show, right? Really famous. Yes. <laughs> what has gone on in your world? Um, you know, uh, I, I, you know, uh, we spoke about the rehab that I, I you know, a director of public relations in uh, the Touch in New Jersey. And you do that, like, you've been doing that for years now. Yeah, I've been yeah, doing yeah. that since July of 2020. Okay. It's uh, such rewarding work. You know, for me, it was like never, I never really got much out of going to meetings, like NA meetings, and I don't know, like it works in the beginning, for me, anyway, and I just think after a certain point when you're able to stand on your own two feet, it's kind of kind of, kind of counterproductive yeah. to keep getting reminded. It's like, we're past that now, let's go to the next chapter. But where I am, I'm still staying plugged in, but in a different way. Okay. Where. I'm like, I'm there, I'm the one who runs the groups. So when I run the groups, obviously I'm teaching them and telling them things from my own experience and teaching them things from my own experience. And when I'm telling these kids, and even grown men and women, to stay on the right path and this is how I did it and from my own experience, when you do that, it's kind of like, it provides you with the extra layer of strength but also holds you more accountable. Because now, I'm telling you all this. Yeah. I have to live by this too. Sure. Because how real and authentic will the message be? If I'm telling you to do this, but then you turn on the news that night, and I'm like, got a DUI, do, yeah, doing no. an armed robbery, you know what I mean? So yeah, but you, you have been on the right track for a long time. Let's remind everybody. So, because you have a reputation that precedes you, but let's remind everybody what you have done no, since no, no. that incident. So, Absolutely. you have been clean for how long? November 18th, 2006. 2006? Yeah. So yeah. 2006, that's seven, almost 17 years, yeah, 16 it's, plus. It's, well, it's going to be 17 in, in, in November. Right, okay. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you really like changed everything, and not only changed everything, got yourself on a much different track, but you have been paying it forward. Right, absolutely. Big time since then. Well, and you, that makes you feel good. Well, that just helps. Yeah. That just helps the whole thing. You know what I mean? It just helps the whole concept of wanting, you know, recovery right. and, and wanting to get better and, and most importantly, helping others to want to get better. Sure. And even your Instagram is great. I always, I follow Insta Lilo on Instagram and it's always an inspiration. I'm seriously, I love your things that you post. Thank you. Where do you get them all? I mean, there's, I go on different pages, yeah. just stuff that I see. Yeah. Some stuff I actually do it myself. I design it because it's saying things people told me over the years yeah. and you know, like when you stress about something, it's like you're going through it twice. And sometimes it may not even happen. Most of the time it doesn't happen. Right. The vast majority of times you worry about things that never actually happen. Right, and when they do, you went through it twice. That's right. Because the mind is the source of all of our woes. Uh -huh. You know? That is so, ain't that the truth? Yes. Okay, good. So you've been doing a lot of that and it's feeling good doing all that. Right. All right, so. Let's talk about Chaz, because we should, because sure. we have talked about him right. personally, you right. and me. So I think the, I haven't talked to him, but we were talking about, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could get, if I could get the two of you together, so I'm talking about Chaz commentary, because there was a, what would you call it? Um, a, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. That's, That's basically it. what it is. Right, um, so I thought it would be nice, you thought it would be nice to get the two of you together and you were ready to apologize and you guys were going to talk it out. What was the goal? Right. So I did try. Didn't work out. But maybe someday it will. Yeah. I would love that. I'm all for it. I don't see why, as two grown men, we can't put our differences aside. Right. They're not real differences. You know, they're just matters of opinion. And, you know, and, you know everyone has an opinion. And as people, we're supposed to respect everyone else's opinions. Mm -hmm. That's your opinion of the situation. This is my opinion of the situation. I respect you, I ask you to respect me. And when we come together, since there is a difference of opinion, we put that aside and we act like two grown men. And we do things, you know, because like, yeah, I'd like to you see know, that. the Bronx tells 30 years old in yeah. September. And I think just as far as the film is concerned and just us as actors, I think we could get so much further 
getting along, especially now because the film is going to be brought up again yeah, in a big way. Yeah, I just got a press release right, today. Right, 30, 30 with the Tribeca, you yes. know, they're going to show the film at the end. Um, which is oh, very they fitting. Are? Well, they're going to close the, the festival with the Bronx Tale. They did that with the Godfather and the Godfather Part Two a few years ago. Right, I because it was the it. anniversary. It was yes, a 40-year anniversary. Yes, it was great. This this one, I mean, obviously, Bronx Tale is not as big as a film as, as Godfather sure, sure, One or sure. Two, but because it's produced and created, well, not created, but you know, the people actually made it happen are right. also the founders of the right, film festival. Right, right. Jane Rosenthal, Robert De Niro. So it's gonna be very special. It's gonna be a very special, uh, very special night. Okay. You know? So are you gonna be part of that? I mean, I wasn't asked to go. Um, if I'm not asked to go, I doubt I will. Um, How can you not be part of that? I don't know. I mean, you know, um, Robert De Niro, I don't know if you saw it in the post. They did get a comment from him. I don't read the post, but well, go ahead, tell I was me. in the post like a month ago. They gave me a nice write-up on how I'm helping people and stuff. And the person, Joshua, who did the, the piece, did the article, he reached out to De Niro, and De Niro said that he's really happy that I'm doing the right thing. He's proud of me. Oh, that's Yeah, great. so that's cool. Um, but then okay. again, you know, um, the Tribeca Film Festival. It's you know, De Niro's uh, you know he's a, a, a New York City staple. He is New York City. You remember that Mastercard commercial mm -hmm. when he's walking down the street? This is my city. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. That's one guy that can actually say this is my city. Yeah. Tribeca. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I love Bobby. I yeah. respect him. I mean, look how long he's been. Listen, you can be the best actor in the world, but it takes more than just that to be able to survive in a business like that. Uh -huh. Obviously, I made some, as Chaz put it best, some monumentally bad choices, uh -huh. but you know what? I try every day to be a better person, so I won't be defined by that. And if I'm an actor, I'm an actor, but there's much more to this world than just being an actor. Sure. And to be honest with you, it's much more fulfilling actually doing what I do. Like when some kid's mom calls, like I just spoke well, to this course, woman huh? today. I mean, just like, yeah. This is what I deal with. Like, this is way, way more gratifying. Like, just, this is the look. This is, okay. Watch All right, this. so I'm looking at text messages right now from somebody who's in rehab's wife. Is that right? No. Oh, different. Daughter. Daughter. My daughter, Madison, has been at More Life a few times less. She's currently in Florida, blah, 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 business. She said she follows her chihuahua, look like small part. When I remove it, the bottom line, I do not know what our person is not defined. Thank you. I'm going to speak to you later, Madison. I told Madison. Great so bottom football. line is this girl yeah. is, like, doing well. She's excelling. And to get a... You know, a phone call. She said, "Mom, he was a big influence for me in my recovery." Okay. Yeah. So stuff like that. Of when course, I can, it's everything. It's all about people. Our world is about people. Our relationships with people, and of course, that's more fulfilling. Because God forbid something was to happen—a really yeah. serious situation. This girl is more likely, because of what we've been through, because yeah, it's yeah. real, to come to my aid in the time of need rather than someone in the film business. I, I mean, listen, it is what it is. It's all superficial. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you fake it to make it. I mean, yeah. that's 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 what it is, basically. All right, I do want everybody to realize, though, that if they want to hear the story about you and Robert De Niro, because you told all of it on my show, just tune in. I put links down in the uh, in the description, and you can just tune into the full interview, the, the two interviews that we've had before, because right. we get into all of that stuff. So I know people like to know those stories, so it's there for you. Um, okay, so let's skip over to your personal world now. So okay. since we last talked, like, what's the latest? Anything, any big events in your life? Well, yeah, I'm writing a screenplay. It's, okay, it's, okay. it's, it's called Never Meet Your Heroes. Um, it's centered on addiction. It's the 30-year anniversary. I'm doing it for a Bronx Tale. It's going to be with Terrell Hicks. She's going to play my wife. Um, oh, you're in it? Oh, yeah. All I'm, right, of course. And, and I'm going to cast somebody uh -huh. like they cast me, an unknown, to play my daughter at 20 years old, 21 okay, years old. Because okay. she's the crux of the movie. She's the she's the real star. Um, we're obviously part of the premise, but it's centered on addiction. My character, Joe Preston, uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a gambler. Um, her name is Joanne. Um, she's an only child, blue collar parents. I don't want to get into it, but yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, really, yeah. Whole plot really, it. really good story. Okay, so you're writing the screenplay Well, now. it's pretty much written. Okay, very now good. Now I'm just putting final touches. I did it all, it started here. I got index cards. Uh -huh. I had Nikki bring me index cards from work and all the scenes that I already had in my head, and I have pictures of them. 
I would put down different acts because you have the introduction, the conflict, and the resolution. So the introduction is you're introducing the characters. So the first scene of the movie, since my character's a gambler, I thought this would be the, I, I say so much without saying so okay. little, and that's the key. I think that's good writing. Just for example, you're introducing my character. His name is Joe Preston, okay? So we know nothing about this person. We just turned on the film. So without saying a word, tell me about this guy, okay? First scene of the movie is a $20 bill is gonna be blowing. You're gonna see somebody come into frame, grabs it, gonna be looking at it, and the camera's gonna be back here. You still don't see the guy's face. He's looking to see if the bill's authentic, and now it cuts to the store, the door, you see him come in. So now with $20, when somebody finds $20, they're gonna go spend it on the things that mean the most to them. A lot of times they're gonna go right for the things, right? I found this $20, so what means the most to me? Okay, so now he goes in the store, and he's looking around, he buys scratch-offs, because he's a degenerate gambler, right? He spends the whole 20, but then realizes he has a little daughter, Danielle, that he's going to pick up from school right after the store. And he just wanted to, okay? So now, he says, take these back, and he buys her a little teddy bear. So right there, that tells you two things about the guy. Mm -hmm. He's a father, he's a loving father, mm -hmm. and he's a gambler. Yeah, and so right there, that's more right. powerful, possibly. Right. But he still left five uh -huh, for the little girl. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What a normal man who loves his daughter should have spent the whole 20 on his daughter, yeah, yeah. but he spent 15 and five. And for a guy with a, a habit and a disease like that, that is a lot. Uh -huh. So that right there, like, oh, at least he did save five bucks for the little girl. Okay. So, I mean, I don't want to get into the yeah, whole yeah, plot, okay. but it is so good. Okay, well, that's going to yeah. be fun. Never meet your heroes. Never meet your heroes. Yeah, because they always disappoint yeah, you. Yeah, right. right. It's like saying you can never go home again. It's the same kind of thing. Right, right. Have you met a hero that you shouldn't have met? Uh, that I thought would have disappointed. Uh, well, that did disappoint me? Yeah. You know, I'm afraid to meet Dan Marino. I don't think I, I heard he's really arrogant. And Dan Marino is like, you know, like a god to me. Oh, you know, this, this is gossipy, I feel like, but I feel like we should talk about it. You know, I met him briefly, did not get to know him at all, but I have heard that he is not, wasn't, this preface is ridiculous, Ray Liotta. Oh, really? Did you ever meet him? No. So I, it's funny that we were talking about Tribeca because I met him outside of the Tribeca Film Festival once. This is like a weird story. He was presenting something, and so was De Niro and Jane Rose and Paul Rosenthal. Yeah. And uh, they were, it, the whole thing had ended. Everybody was leaving. Um, and then I left a little bit later. I go out, there was a red carpet that was empty because it was, everybody had deserted. And there was Ray Liotta standing there with no people, no reps, no managers, no wife, no nothing, himself. And some fan went up to him and said, oh, can I get a picture? And they took a selfie. And then I was like, oh, he was a dream guest of mine. I used to mention him as somebody I'd love to get on Really Famous. And also, especially because he has an interesting history. He was adopted and it was very interesting to me. Like he seemed, seemed when I heard him in another interview, fascinating and I was like I feel like I'm gonna like this guy anyway so I see him on the red carpet he's got no entourage this is my opportunity so what do I do I go up to him and I say hi Mr. Leona can I take a picture and he said sure and I take my phone and I take a picture of him not oh, even thought, with him oh okay oh just did, did, that, did that get him upset no it didn't get him upset it was him I took a picture of him right. only but he was like okay he looked at me weirdly like you don't want to get in the picture but I was frozen and then I said thank you and I moved on and I didn't even invite him on to really famous and I left it was my opportunity, golden opportunity. Anyway, that's not well, the story. Yeah. I know, unfortunately, that's not an option anymore. Yeah. But after that, I was like, oh, that was my story of regret. And then later I had heard so many things about he's not very pleasant. And so then I thought to myself, all right, maybe better off that my only run in with him was that. Anyway, I have no idea what his personality really was like, because I do not know. I never had a chance to talk to him. I mean, I never met him. I loved everything he was in. He was, I mean, obviously, Goodfellas was his best. I don't think you could really top that. I mean, but, uh, and I was surprised that Scorsese, oh, you know he was good Scorsese in? never worked with him. Again. I know. I don't know why. Well, maybe yeah, just in rumors fit again. And I don't know. I don't know either. But um, he was good in that movie. It was, I think it was called The Marriage Story. Did you see that with Adam Driver and, um, what is her name? I want to say Scarlett Johansson. 
they were in this Amazon movie, and he played a divorce lawyer, and he was amazing. He was so good in it. Very different from. Well, him. I, I think he's always. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Have you ever seen him in Narc? It was no. a movie with Jason Patrick. Tom Cruise mm -hmm. produced it. He plays a narc, like a dirty cop. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh really? Oh, he will, watch he that. will give you chills. He's got oh, the big gold tape, and he's loud, and all he does is scream, but it fits for his character. Uh -huh. It's menacing in that. Okay. It's one of his best. Although oh, okay, I think so Goodfellas should, is still the best. I should watch that. Because Goodfellas is just the way, like, you can't get filmmaking better than that. Even the song. You got me on my knees. Like, but dude, the whole soundtrack but, was but, incredible. But, the, but it was the end of the song that no one even listens to when he was finding all the bodies in the car. Yeah. What about the bells of St. Mary when Pesci kills Samuel L. Jackson? Where did he come up with that? Yeah, I don't know. The That's bells of St. Mary, just right. the kind of stuff like, wow. Like right. this is the kind of stuff like making a film, like when you put good music elevates. It elevates everything, and sometimes it gives you more meaning than it, 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 it was meant to have. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Best music. Oh, it yeah. was so perfectly, it was Tarantino. He yeah, also yeah. knows how to take music and place in just, just the right song. I don't think there's much that right Quentin spot. Tarantino can't do. Yeah, I'm a He fan. writes these stories, like in Glorious Bastards, and just the stuff that he comes up with. It's not... It's very, very, it's very, it's very outside the box, divergent right. writing. It's not inside the box. Let me write what I know and make it great. This, I don't even know if he, I don't know if he could possibly know that stuff. I don't think any human knows it, but just to, no, he knows it all. I'm telling you because I heard him on a podcast once, and he's so interesting on a podcast because yeah, he's, he's very. He talks a mile a minute. He has all these ideas, and he's really just a total geek. And a genius. And in the best way. And a way. genius. And yeah. a genius. And he, I think, has seen every movie ever made, probably, and all the things, and then he mixes them up together and creates his and own creates style. And creates his own style. Right. Yeah. And it's like, Pulp Fiction is unbelievable. Right. I remember, we, I remember when we went to see it. It was 94 when it came out. It was the fall. And I was with my girlfriend at the time, and I remember we seen this dude, this guy, I know Anthony, I know he was there on a date too. Mm -hmm. So we ended up hanging out afterward, all of us, but there was like, not, not even standing room. There was so many people in that theater, I'll never forget people sitting on the floor. Yeah. I've never seen a theater that packed. But I think when Joker 2 comes out, I think it will Yeah, be. maybe. But I remember going to see Pulp Fiction in 94, in the movie theater, and somebody had their like three-year-old kid in the movie. Crying and making noise, yeah. But who brings a three-year-old to Pulp Fiction? You know, it's the worst when they bring a three-year-old on a, uh, uh, a red, uh, red eye flight. Oh, can, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I want I, I want to sleep. That's yeah, why I, I took know. that. And I then I get home and I, I got the whole I don't mind them anymore. To me, because they're not, my babies are grown. So yeah, to yeah. me, when I hear a baby, it doesn't even bother me. Yeah, yeah. But like, believe me, I know exactly what you're talking about. But what's worse than somebody kicking in the back of your chair? Right. That's worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can't stop that, and it's like you're just there on the plane trying to sleep or whatever. And it's like. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I would say I would, I would, I would say I wouldn't be mean about it or yeah. hey, you know, hey, but then if you hit they forget. Yeah. They forget and then they keep kicking again. I have to ask you something I'm not sure if I can ask you here, so I have to whisper it to you and we'll cut it. Okay, so can I make you? Sure. Okay, good. So how's Nikki? Nikki is wonderful. Nikki's your well, girlfriend. Right. She's okay. an adjunct professor at NYU and she works at a charter school in the Bronx. Uh -huh. And she has a PhD, like I said, in peace building and conflict resolution. Yeah, she's great. And I also like to say, too, like if somebody, you can kind of judge somebody based on who they choose to be their partner. Absolutely. And Nikki's a great choice. She makes my life easier, not harder. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. And she makes me want to be a better man she, right, for her. Right. Like she's, she does so much for me. She doesn't ask for really anything. It's like the littlest things. She's a very special person. Yeah, totally. And and you know, I mean, obviously she has the PhD in conflict resolution, and uh -huh. sometimes I can be a little hot-headed. No. But that I'm still working no. on. But that's why she balances me out perfectly. She's not somebody throwing gas on the yeah. fire. She's somebody throwing water on the fire, and she does it in a way which is so subtle that it doesn't even look like she's trying to. It's just like she does it, and before you know it, I'm like. And I didn't even realize that was a tactic that she learned, and that's why she has a PhD. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So A plus to Nikki, and A plus to you for being with Nikki. And all right, we have to wrap because we're out of time for a little mini update. But I'm going to ask you one question: How have you changed in the last year? In what way has something about you changed? Um, I guess I don't take things as personal anymore. 
like if someone doesn't call me back right away, yeah. I would always think it's because maybe of my past or this guy's treating me a certain way because he knows or whatever. But you know what? Usually that's not the case. And that's why I said the mind is the source of all yeah. of our woes. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, like a lot, you know, and this is why I'm going to have it in the film. And my daughter becomes a drug addict and she and she experiences methamphetamine psychosis which you start hearing voices and seeing things and this is I jumped out of a car so I know when I wrote it exactly what it is so that a little more what, what, unobstructed uh-huh that's from cocaine psychosis I got real paranoid after doing it for so long one night back in 2000 I thought my friends were gonna kill me because that paranoia is voices so I jumped out of the car so I guess after being high so many times and experiencing that psychosis, your mind gets wired that way as if this stuff is really happening. And sometimes now, I'm still feeling these after effects. And this is why we say, don't do drugs. Because you may get off the drugs, but I'm still dealing with the after effects. And I'm getting better because I'm realizing that this stuff is not real. It's in here, but it takes time. There's repercussions. You know what I mean? But it gets better every day, and it gets easier every day. So remember that. And thank you. That is a great ending. I absolutely love it. Thanks, Lita. Thank you.